And we are back, and it is time for Nerding Out. This is the section of the show where we talk about the things that have that we've been nerding out over. And I'm going to go first because mine is a twofer slash threefer because I got a new phone. I got the Samsung Galaxy S7. Um, has not blown up yet, so haha, ha, everyone can make quit making those jokes. Um, but with it, um, I sold two other ones to my friend or my friends uh, from church, and there is a promotion going on where you buy you buy a Samsung product, so the S7 or S7 Edge, you get one of these for free. The Samsung Galaxy or the Samsung Gear VR powered by Oculus. And, um, magically it became Monday (laughs) is sort of how things went. Um, because it seems like every chance I, I had, I was putting my phone in here and being transported into other worlds and, you know, exploring, you know, all these other things. And yeah, it was, it's cool. I, I freaking love this thing. Um, it's so cool. And I, on Sunday at church, I became a salesperson for Samsung without getting paid. Cause I think I sold like seven of them to people. Um, but yeah, and so the coolness doesn't end there. Cause I found an app that's in the Oculus store that is also on steam and we will have a link to the steam store and it is called Annie Amber. Now this is a game in a similar vein to Flower, um, the old the PlayStation 3 game, where there's no dialogue, there's just music, and the only words you actually see are Annie Amber when you start. And <clears throat> this game is so well done um, in that you're it's a puzzle where you're just going around, you're doing full three, 360 degrees. I highly recommend you sit down for this, for this game. And you are just sitting there looking around these beautiful, beautifully created worlds. Um, and you are slowly learning about this, this Annie character's life. And it's just so well done. And it's it's one of these story, it's one of these games that talking about it doesn't quite do it justice. Handing it handing it over to people does it better justice than this because it's it's one of those like I was trying to find games you know for um you know to show the kids. I end up settling on a different app that it's just it's Google Street View except you look around in it. You know you're you're actually looking around in Street View and I'm like. And so I was like, hey, okay, guys, guess where we're at? And I put in our hometown. And they're like, wait, where are we? And I'm like, really? That's here, dude. Like, that's like a mile down the road, like two miles down the road. How do you not know that? And all that. But, you know, Annie Amber is one of those games that you could put on, you know, if you have the Gear VR or, you know, the um, the Oculus, you know, for the computer or whatever to do sh- the Steam VR. It's one of those games you sit down. It's it's worth the seven dollars on on Steam to to play, but you just sit down for you know a day, or you know break it up over you know a couple days and whatnot, and you just do this incredible story. Listen to wonderfully done music, and just enjoy enjoy this world that ha- has been created for you. Um. But yeah, so Corey, I just you... want to say real fast before we jump up. Um, yeah. I know it's unlikely. Have you ever seen the 1983 movie Brainstorm with Christopher Walken, and it was Natalie Wood's last film? I don't think I have. Okay, so anytime I hear about anybody doing virtual reality stuff, Brainstorm's a little bit different. What they did is they created a mechanism that would record experiences by people, and then other people would put on the mechanism, and they'd be able to replay them uh, as if they were experiencing those things themselves. 
Uh, so when you say that you lost a weekend to your, your Samsung VR, uh, there is a scene in Brainstorm. I'm not going to spell it out for you, but it is somebody who's basically uh, taken... Well, yeah, I'll, I'll spell it out a little bit. Someone else had sex while wearing the machine, and then another guy gets it and puts it on a loop and just sits there in his office with the loop going and just <laughs> doesn't surface from the room for like days and his wife is worried about him and he sends in Christopher Walken's character to see can you go see what's going on with Bob over there uh yeah Bob's uh kind of like fapping it um so Bob's it's, it's a little a, extra sticky right now yeah it, it's a it's a good movie it did not do incredibly well um and it's certainly dated now from 1983 it must have been filmed in 81 because that's when Natalie Wood actually passed away but yeah. there's some there's some pretty interesting stuff in there and early walking, which is always a fun thing to see. Yeah, I think it's before the dead zone. But no, yeah, definitely check it out if you have the Samsung. If you have a Samsung phone, I believe it's the S six, the S six Edge, um, the Note five and newer. Um, so the you know six pluses, uh, the six or S six pluses, and all that. Um, the Gear VR is compatible with those. And then any Amber, you can find them on the Oculus store in there. You can find it on the Steam store. You know, check out that game. It is, it is, wor- it is worth it. You know, it's a, it's a fun, immersive game. I actually showed it to my mom in the beginning because you start in this house and you go and then you're, it, you hear the ocean. Like it's, it's almost like, like an Italian villa or, or like, like a Greek little like coastal town house thing. But you look and you, you know, it's like you see nothing over the edge. And, and I, I should say it's a little bit. So if you've seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, it, it, it's an original. And, and this just feels maybe a little derivative of that. But it's, it's highly enjoyable. The, the characters themselves have that kind of great interaction. Um, Gosling plays a sort of smarmy guy. He he gets to be a little bit crass. He gets to be a little bit like he's he takes advantage of people a little too much. And Russell Crowe's character is more honest, although he's also the sort who will beat the shit out of you, but do it to your face. You know, he's like he's not going to bullshit you about it. It's like, hey, by the way, I'm I'm going to fucking break your arm right now. Just so you know, it's not personal but I'm doing it. And the daughter kind of keeps them both in check. She keeps Russell Crowe from getting too violent. She keeps her dad from being too much of a bullshit artist and, and gives him sort of a conscience. It's very fun. It's certainly got some good sort of uh, noirish storytelling to it. It has a good amount of violence and and some sneak up violence or characters who die that you're not expecting necessarily to die. There is a great bit with uh, Matt Bomer, who was on White Collar on USA. Yeah. Uh, he comes into this is a very good, interesting character. I wish this would have continued. I wish that there was success for this film because it would be nice to see these characters come back. I don't know how likely that would be. You know, in the one and dones that Shane Black has done before, it, it seems okay with that. But he did do, uh, he wrote the, the Lethal Weapon movies. And so it, you kind of understand that the character camaraderie is what he excels at. And the sort of slapsticky humor is another thing that he excels at. And if you like any of those things, this is going to work for you really well. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I would definitely uh, put it on rotation to watch again. It's, uh, it, it, But it did make me nostalgic for Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which I think might be better. So just a step back from that, but not a big step. Yeah. All right. Um, I I do have the nice guys on my list, um, which is actually a great segue. So we'll be back after this. <laughs> 